Jones. Top 20 recruit, and she is the preseason Big 12 Freshman of the Year. And Taryn Kern will step in. Back home in San Jose after transferring in from Indiana. It's been a struggle at the start, although she, her on-base percentage is all right because she walks a lot and she's been hit by a bunch of pitches in their first eight games. They come in at five and three. Strike from, strike from the uh, tall, slender right-hander. Mike White in his sixth season now at Texas. Got them back to the Women's College World Series a couple years ago. Last year eliminated by Tennessee in the Super Regionals for Stanford. A return to the Women's College World Series for the first time since Jessica Mendoza's playing days in the early Ooh. 2000s. Bring it way back. Ooh. Way back machine with Jessica Allister. So mm -hmm. she played on a pair of World Series teams and then guiding her alma mater back there last year. Full count. Swing and a miss. One down. Let's take a look at our keys to the game, brought to you by the Shriners Children's Hospital. Now batting, well, for Stanford, player, the biggest key for them is to play defense. They've got great pitching. And when other teams put the ball in play, this is where they've seen we've seen them struggle. And then for Texas, just keep on, keep it on, keep rolling, wreak havoc. Do it throughout their lineup. They have been one of the hottest teams in all of softball these first two weeks. They've risen up to. Number three in the country. And they just beat number two earlier tonight with a win over Tennessee. Kaylin Cope, the senior from Scottsdale. Movement, that rise ball is just explosive at the top of the zone. Rise ball up and out of the zone, two and two, slinging it at 70 miles an hour. Two up, two down, a couple of strikeouts for the freshman. G just attacks the zone. You can see the way she's got a little body lean to the left. So that pitch that she rides on the outer half to these left-handed hitters is going to have a little up, a little out. So it's moving on two different planes, just very explosive. Here's Ali Kaneshiro. Their first game here yesterday, she bopped three home runs. Oh, Kavan is on early. Well, for Stanford, they usually like facing rise ball pitchers because they have a lot flatter swings. They don't have a lot of fly ball type swings. So for them, it's about getting on time. Yeah. That's six. Not on time there. No. Six swing and miss already here in this first inning. Wow. And they're not out of the zone. I mean, these rise balls are going through the zone. A lot of late movement, plus the velocity. Can she strike out the side in 15 pitches? No. 
Nada. Maybe yes to the first, but not to the second. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 16. for Tegan Kavan. Kavan, the freshman, is just so explosive. The top of the zone, that rise ball, seven swing and miss in that first inning for Kavan. Texas picked up the win earlier tonight over Tennessee, two to one, after a 5-0 opening weekend in which they scored 64 runs and blasted opposing pitching to the tune of 10 home runs. Gave UCLA their largest loss ever, 16 to nothing run rule in Westwood. And, and pretty much a young team that does not play like a young yeah. team. They are going to be a handful. They opened up the preseason um, ranked fifth in the country, and their schedule features numbers one, two, three, and four. So tough tests throughout the season. Of course, they will have their final big 12 showdown series with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State before Texas and OU move on to the SEC next year. Stanford will be leaving the Pac-12 to play in the ACC. The uh, Tennessee win earlier with a single came in to score. And draws the leadoff walk. New rule this year. It's a pitch clock, folks, provided by Whistle Stop here at the Clearwater Invitational. 20 seconds. And in the first 10 seconds, the pitcher has to be on the rubber and the batter has to be in the box. And then the pitch, well, the uh, pitcher must separate their hands to start their delivery within 20 seconds. There we are. And there's the pitch clock right down there to our left, upper right hand of your screen. So you'll, you'll see some of those uh, clocks around the country. Not yet required to have the clock in stadium. There we are, it's right there, right there, right there. I can right there. reach it, oh, there. almost there. On the top of the stairwell suite right there, that's that's for the, uh, One of the celebrities when they show up, yeah. I was directionally challenged on my first point. <laughs> and our entire crew behind the scenes was blasting me, America. <laughs> so we had a redo. Where was that again? We had a redo. We had a redo. Redo it. Mia Scott gets the start at third base, drops down a beauty of a bunt, safe at first. Two on with nobody out. Mia Scott is so dynamic. She's got speed, she hits for average, she can also hit for power, and she reads the defense perfectly. She sees that Barry is back, the third baseman for Stanford, and just pops that down and is just lights out getting down the line gets herself an infield base hit. Katie Stewart with a chance. And for a strike. Let's 
Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater. Oh, it's been the middles for Texas. Both Alyssa Washington and Vivi Martinez, the double play earlier. Look at that, just go ahead and bear ham it to turn two, and they have been huge, that combination. Both of them to be able to make that happen. Stewart's looking for her first hit with a runner in scoring position of the season. 0 for 3 so far. Shows a little bunt. Tries to pull the corners in. They are hoping this freshman class this year is up to snuff to with the uh, freshman class of last year that had a huge impact for Texas. Kylie Chung being able to locate her drop ball, but not her rise. And that's the big thing. She's very heavy down the change up. But when she goes upstairs, she hasn't been able to get anything to entice these swings. Stewart tries to lay down the bunk. It is interesting, Stewart, hitting in that three hole, has Reese Atwood behind her. So I think Coach just trying to get her a little bit protection. One of the lowest averages on the team, 200 for the freshman. I mean, obviously, is everything's a new experience for her. Situation to try and get her to move runners here. Texas to a 3 0 lead. And you know, just sometimes when you don't get the bunt down, you think I'd better find a way to do something in this situation. And she does. She sends this yard. Yeah, and this is two strikes. Change up. I love if she knew it. I mean, as soon as she hits this, just go ahead and stop and watch this thing get into that night air. But a change up down in the zone, and because she simplified, sometimes those are the best swings to be at the ball as far as that. Second home run of her young career, just outstanding. 39th home run through the first two days of this tournament. With teams averaging nearly, the games I should say, averaging nearly 14 runs per game combined. So it's been a couple of days of really good offense. And that bop was as good as it gets. I wonder if she'll get the bunt sign again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to say, yeah, just green light to swing away the rest of the year, <laughs> young lady. And that's why she's in the three hole. <laughs> A walk, a single, and a three-run shot to greet Kylie Chung tonight. Well, they're going to be reliving that one all night. Second of her career, already now 11 on the season for Texas. They continue to hit at a blistering pace, even with runners in scoring position. Over 400. Ball four to Atwood. Here's a powerful stroke. sounded different off the bat. Yeah, yeah, you can just hear it. Yeah! I just love, like, her eyes. Her eyes the whole time locked in. And let me watch this. I would, too. Yeah! Deep into the night. Is that a, they're, they're looking for the ball back did there. They get, they it? get it? Yeah. Yes, yes. they right. did. 
Nice work, girls. Way to go. Looks like they were aided by the uh, headlights golf of a cart. pickup truck or a golf cart back there. Yeah. Now batting the shortstop, number 23, Viviana Martinez. Vivi Martinez will step in. Already some activity in the bullpen for Stanford. Just like in their game earlier today, they had to make a switch in the first inning. Alyssa Houston is quickly trying to limber up. The biggest thing of this inning so far has actually just been the ball to strike ratio, the two walks. I mean, yes, big, huge home run. But right now, Kylie Chung having a hard time of being able to control her pitches. Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield Softball tonight from the Tampa Bay area. Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, and Jessica Mendoza with you as Vivi Martinez grounds out. Now, Reese Atwood able to move Number over 11. to second oh, base here with in. one away, and it's already 3 0 Texas thanks to. Oh, big smile on Katie Stewart's face, and why not a three-run home run that may still be going. She hit it a long, long way. And here's Alyssa Washington. Senior out of Abilene, Texas. Longhorns are 6-0 on the season, and off to perhaps the hottest start in the country. Just play well in every asset of the game. They pitch well, the defense is outstanding, and this offense put up body numbers. Picked up a, a win earlier tonight over number two, Tennessee. So they are looking for a second top 10 win of the night. Pop foul out of play. The lineup for Mike White's Longhorns. Couple of walks already, and Stewart with the big smash. 13 consecutive trips to the Super Regionals from his time at Oregon and now at Texas. Six trips to the Women's College World Series. There's a base rip up the middle. They're going to hold up the runner at third. And runners on the corners with one out. Washington with a single. Kylie Chung is in the circle. Out of Thousand Oaks, California, her fifth appearance. She has only thrown. This is just her fifth inning of work. She pitched one out in their Florida State game here. She pitched one out in their Tennessee game here. They were a winner over the Lady Vols, one nothing this afternoon. Lost to Florida State, four nothing. Leanne Good, one zero -oh pitch. Runner goes, they will throw down to second and get the out and hold that wood at third. That's why Ali Kanashiro is one of the best catchers in the game. And I love that they throw through on this. A lot of times you see someone come cut this off. A lot of times a no throw, but if you're gonna run and be able to take down the best catcher in the country from her knees, throws her out easily. Mike White all over Atwood at third though. I think she was supposed to go at least break. Yeah, because there was no cut in sight. Yeah, Atwood probably could have just walked home on that. I think a lot of you're just not used to it. <laughs> no one throws down with less than two outs. It's usually a fake throw, something. Big 
swing and a miss. But the three-run home run gets Texas on top. Uh, the towering blast from Katie Stewart, three-run shot and a 3-0 Texas lead. And here comes Stanford now in the top of the second inning. Trying to get bat on ball against Tegan Kavan. The freshman struck out the side, all three of them swinging in the first. And she only needed 16 pitches to do it. Magnus has that great break. Six foot tall, really uses her entire body. Out of West Des Moines, Iowa. Same high school, Dowling Catholic, as one Caitlin Clark. Congratulations to Caitlin, the new all-time leading scorer in college basketball history. Ava Gall. She's got a game-winning hit here in this tournament for Stanford. Earlier today, a big double. It's Peyton Goshall in Tennessee. Good looking kid right there. It was Nigeri. Kennedy looks on. Well, oh, you're referencing the other good looking kid right there. <laughs> a relative on of some yours. Goldfish. <laughs> and now a strikeout looking four straight to start the night. Well, the freshman just has so much break on the ball. So not only does she have velocity in the upper 60s, lower 70s, she gets out long to that eight-foot circle. Her rise ball, it moves on a couple of different planes. It goes up, it comes in at you, and she can also mix speeds. Just so much talent. She's working on a great ball as well. And they'll break through with a base hit here for Emily Jones. First pitch hunting, we've seen Ava Gall came out this inning. You could tell that was the conversation. Hey, don't get behind in the count. That's how we've had four strikeouts until this point. But Emily Jones jumping on the first one. The pitcher, Kylie Chung. You may recall her big home run at the Women's College World Series in the semifinals against Oklahoma. They were so good in the circle with both Kennedy and Alana Vauder. And then at the end of the season, they put it together just enough at the plate, were clutch when they had to be, made that great run deep into the great defense too. World Series. You know, for Jessica Allister, back with her alma mater. Tori Nyberg, her teammate. Pitching coach for Stanford. They played together at Stanford. It's a heck of a staff. Jessica Merchant, a former national champion shortstop at Michigan, and Sarah Gronwagen, the All America former pitcher at Minnesota. Get the exit velo on Ooh. that one. That was big. It's definitely 75 plus. Strikeout number five. Every out recorded so far has been a strikeout. This one's that changeup. She's worked very hard on that pitch. The rise ball, you look up, and then she dumps this pitch down in. Again, long and aggressive, sells that pitch. Pushes it out off the palm. Jade Berry. Freshman from Queens Creek, Arizona. Brother's a really good baseball player. And Jacob Berry, first round draft pick, Miami Marlins. Was able to actually get away from spring training to come watch his sister play here. Hadn't seen her play in like five years.
Freshman. It's like a rise ball kind of going away from her barrel. Does a good job of getting extended on this pitch, and it is no doubt out of here. Right underneath the scoreboard. How about that for your first home run? Her hands in the air. Go get her that ball. She's going to remember that one. <laughs> What an adjustment here in this second inning. Even though there's a couple of more strikeouts, there's also two more hits and a big two-run home run. Mixing in that changeup. You're a hard throwing rise ball pitcher up in the zone. You're going to get a lot of swing and miss, but you're also going to get a lot of connection for Slug. You need to have pitches to offset the power rise. Well, a lot of times for hitters, you just want to really think of barreling it up. The pitcher is supplying all that velocity, high 60s, low 70s. The ball has been jumping off the bat here. Wow, she strikes out the side again, but uh, this lineup has been exciting to watch. I think 13 of the 15 in there on the roster have a hit with a runner in scoring position. And uh, a pitching change here for Stanford. They go to Reagan Kraus in the bottom of the second after Kylie Chung threw the first. This is their fourth game here in the, in the last two days, so we figured they would have to really work their pitching staff well. Eight, nine, and the top coming up for Texas. Reagan's a righty senior from Illinois. Three and one on the year. She pitched uh, just the two outs in that Tennessee win earlier today before uh, Kennedy came on in relief. Krause has a lot of north and south. She threw about 42% of her pitches as rise ball, about 32% as a drop. That's in for a strike, 65 miles an hour. And you can see the way she hammers her zone. That's the rise ball, that's the red, where she gets the majority of her outs, but she really likes to throw that arm side of the plate. Also, we'll mix in a screwball as well that she'll work underneath the hands of the righties away from the lefties. See a lot of these pitchers starting to have that double break, try to get that ball to move on multiple planes. Jander, you gotta do everything. I mean, the scores that we've seen and the way the offense has completely taken over the game, it's not just good enough to go vertical or just horizontal. Well, in the analytics too, right, Jess? I mean, yeah, we see it. You know. It's taken over baseball, and it has worked its way into the core of softball as well. You got scouts on everything and everybody as Henry goes down, swinging one down. Kraus working the upper part of the zone, and that's exactly what that out distribution showed. Arm side of the plate, rise ball. Look at the reacts too. Alley count Shiro. You could hear the whole dugout. Oh! Texas is leading this game, but Stanford getting two runs on the board. You want to be able to re respond defensively with your pitching staff, get outs. Ashton Maloney, who led Texas last year with a 383 batting average. Got that short game, and she's smart short game. She's kind of that new age short game, because she'll read the defense. If she sees a hole on the right side, she'll go there. Had a single and walked in the Tennessee win earlier. Slaps that one foul. 
Cameron Ellison behind the plate. Tom Meyer is the first base umpire. Steve Gould at third tonight. for the Stanford pitchers. Kraus working that drop ball low and inside, really turns this over, great over the top rotation on the corner. Back to the top of the order now, Bella Dayton walked and scored on the Stewart home run in the first. Longhorns projected uh, in the preseason, second in the Big 12 behind Oklahoma, as the Sooners will attempt something that has never been done before when they go for a fourth consecutive national championship this spring. But uh, the way the season has started out, yeah, the Sooners look really good. They, they won again today. Their win streak is at 58, but Texas and Oklahoma State looking pretty strong again as well. Yeah, the Big 12 is going to be a tough conference. In addition of UCF, Houston, BYU. It's a very spread out conference. In fact, I think just a couple weekends here and they start up all the way first, uh, first and part of March. Well, we've already seen Tegan Kavan uh, strike out the side a couple of times tonight. Can Kraus do it here in the bottom of the second? Nibbling at that corner. Gets it that time. Three up. Barry bomb. Chung started Barry the game, bomb. then Kraus came out. Oh, I like that one. Uh, now, Tegan Kavan already with six strikeouts through the first two innings. River Mailer to lead things off, nine and then the top. Oh. Checking on the Texas dugout. I think it hit the wall, but it just missed. Ooh. Ouch. Steve Singleton, Kristen Zaleski, and uh, Patty Ruth Taylor. <laughs> the coaching staff there for Texas. Coach Chris was saying you could feel it. Feel the breeze. <laughs> Mailer, a terrific freshman year last season in the outfield, was moved back into the infield playing short. Key for her this year is to cut down on the strikeouts, too many of them a year ago. Scott's there, one down. Top of the order for Stanford, now batting the second baseman, Taryn Kern. That'll bring up Taryn Kern. Struck out in the first as Kern continues to try and make the transition from Indiana to Stanford. It's been rough at the plate. She only struck out 12 times all year last year and already 10 strikeouts in their first eight games this season. One of the hardest things to do, I mean, she was leading the country in home runs for a bulk of the year. 
You want to try to replicate that, repeat it in your sophomore season. But now teams have the scouting report, the analytics, all the information. And it's interesting the way she gets in the box and, and really where she sets herself up, Jess. She's so far on the plate. You can see she actually she's on the on the chalk. Just outside the base. She's got multiple hit by pitches. I mean, it is hard to get into that zone. And that you see her power zone. I mean, it's it's outside. And so pitchers try to get in. That's why she's on the plate, tries to take away that inside corner. And with all those analytics, she has absolutely been attacked on that inside corner. She's been jammed up. And a lot of that, a lot of off speed, a lot of hard at the hands. I mean, it's a wild box score because she has the 10 strikeouts, but she also has the 13 free passes. Got a great eye. 23 home runs last year, edged out by uh, Kiki Malloy for honors nationally. But those were all single season records. And she is a Northern California native, so decided to transfer back home. I mean, those numbers are mm. just gaudy as a freshman. Freshman, yeah. impressive. Swing and a miss. Tegan Kavan already now with a seventh strikeout for a new career high for her. Now the right really using that rise ball that's got that climb to it. It has a little bit of out, almost like a scry, so a little bit of a screwball rise ball, but she attacks Kern very well the entire at bat. Really working those corners. All seven outs are strikeouts for Tegan Kavan. Well, she is a pitcher that Mike White has been high on. We had Zoom calls with him even before the season started, and. He's excited about their whole staff, but he gets another level of elevation <laughs> when he's talking yeah. about his freshman. And he's a former pitcher himself from New Zealand. And she's a, a different look than the other four pitchers that he has that are, are so good. That's what makes that staff so hard to prepare for. can look at analytics and he can match up his pitching staff based on swing profiles of the team. If they're weak in the upper part of the zone, it's probably gonna be Kovan. If they're weak in the lower part of the zone, they're probably gonna go with Mac Morgan or you know, Sitali uh, Gutierrez, who we saw earlier today, who was outstanding in the lower half of the zone. Sophia Simpson for <laughs> for her teams that can't hit off speeds. You know, she's got one of the best changeups in the game. I mean, he just has so many different tools. And then when you need the lefty lefty matchup, you got a stealth check. I mean, he's just got everything. Sophia Simpson with that outstanding changeup we were talking about. She was a huge part of them getting to the World Series, taking down Arkansas yeah. two years ago in that super regional battle. 2-2. Two -two. Strikeout number eight for Tegan Kavan. Uh, Mia Scott singled and scored in the first. Led the Horns last year in hits, stolen bases, runs scored. Chops that to second. Ooh, took a funny bounce, handled by Kern. One down. Hey, Sunday on ABC, got women's hoops for you and college game day live from Columbia. As number one and undefeated South Carolina takes on the Georgia Bulldogs. Our college game day crew tips off our coverage from Colonial Life Arena at noon. They'll have all the latest for you. Caitlin Clark, the new career scoring leader in NCAA history. And uh, the breaking news 
uh, out of Connecticut tonight. Paige Beckers announcing she will be back for another year next season with UConn. Those stories and more, and just how good is Carolina, and can anybody beat them? And on the road to the women's final four. They've handled all comers. One down for Katie Stewart. The three-run home run in the first. And here's that rip. Katie Stewart back in the first inning. I mean, this, the focus, the eyes, two strikes. A little change piece, but it did not phase her. Well, remember earlier in that at bat, she was given the bunt signal and did not get the bunt down, <laughs> thankfully for Texas fans. <laughs> that was off of the designated player, Kylie Chung. This time off of Reagan Krause, she draws the walk. 27 of their runs this year, thanks to the home run. Here's Reese Atwood. Reese has hit three of them this year. That's why she was the National Player of the Week opening weekend. Had an RBI double in the Tennessee win earlier tonight. And hit her bat, foul ball, 0-2. Well, it's interesting, too, because Atwood has just been slamming the ball in that four holes, uh, anywhere, all over. But the fact that Coach White keeps Kitty Stewart in that three hole, hitting only 200, having Atwood protect her. Oh, my goodness, there goes another one deep in. Look at where this pitch is located. I mean, this is an 0-2 pitch. The first two pitches, they came in on her hands. I mean, like, inside. Then they go off speed away. But look at Atwood. I mean, she's starting to get into her front side, but stays back and up. You see her back knee drive down to get to this pitch, stay with this pitch. She's so strong to be able to hit that pitch out. Both home runs on change-ups, and I love that. Power following power. It's like Atwood is teaching Stewart, the freshman, as they go. It's this lineup. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, and both uh, home runs had a runner on base courtesy of a walk. And so that adds to the tally, 5-2 Texas. <laughs> Vivi Martinez grounded out her first time up. I think, too, just the importance of how many 0-2 home runs we've seen today alone. Pitches just a little bit too much over the plate. Not a bad idea to go change up away, but. Yeah. 41st home run of the tournament right here. Look at her reach wow. to get the, I mean, this is how strong Atwood is. Most this players hit that off the end of the bat. It's a weak fly ball, but because she took her back knee down with it, and then she's got that explosiveness. And, and just to your point, her reach, she's six foot tall, long arms, long bat. She can go down and get a pitch on the outer half that she's in front of. And like you said, she just gets that weight pause just enough to get that barrel through. It's, it's an adjustment mid pitch that not a lot of hitters can do. And she's just a special hitter. It's interesting, too, because when you look at her spray chart, a lot of her home runs last year have been on the inner half. You know, she really is a lot of pool, but you throw her something on the outer half that just kind of lays around, she will punish it. Just nowhere to hide up and down this lineup the first two weeks of the season for Texas. She'll get the lead out at second. And that's it. And here's what we're talking about when you talk about hitting for average and you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the 400 baseman. hitters Damn plus. Good. 
and they all do it differently too. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple slappers in there getting on base. That's why Mike White looks so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and foul. We'll be hearing from Coach White coming up next half inning. It's a turnaround for Texas that started actually here in Clearwater two years ago. And then these outstanding two recruiting classes. You may recall two years ago they came and played here and went 0 for 5 looked sloppy, gave up 41 runs, and did not look like they would be anything close to a national championship contender. And by the end of the year, they were just that, played in the championship series. Another base hit here, Leanne Good. Leanne Good stepping in the bucket, inside pitch, goes up and gets it. You can see the way that she just opened up those hips with that foot going the left fielder, toward the line. Punches that through the 5-6 hole. But the turnaround two years ago when they went from unseated to the finals, no team had ever done that before. It's been a different program the last couple of years. And they certainly appear to be primed to make another deep run you know Mike tried five times at Oregon got to the World Series could not get that ring went back there a couple of years ago and they'll just keep coming at you and trying to take things down in Oklahoma City well, I think this is a team that's going to match up well against Oklahoma that's gonna be a fun big 12 series another deep ball This pitch is up and away, and Caden Henry, who had showed some short game earlier in this at bat, ends up just staying in there. Listen to that sound. Texas on a tear. This is just typical Texas style. They figure out a way to get on it, base on balls, hit by pitch. And they just create that havoc all the way around for the pitcher, for the defense. A two-run home run and a three-run home run here in the bottom of the third for, for the Longhorns. So a first home run. The Hunter is the pinch hitter in the ninth spot in the lineup. She's two for two as a pinch hitter this year. And Vic does have a home run. Three home runs on the night for Texas, one for Stanford, and an 8-2. Longhorn lead. Big moment here for the youngster, right? All, all the freshman pitchers, why don't you almost take the sign out there? All the freshman pitchers, are these first big moments, you know the adrenaline's pumping. There she goes. Comes back at 66 miles an hour. She came in last night pinch hitting, so definitely a multi-tool player. Of course, they returned Nigel Kennedy, but Alana Vauder opted to transfer to South Carolina, so there is room behind Kennedy now in that pitching room to pick up a lot more innings. Stanford, the preseason favorites in the Pac-12.
Nice catch oh, nice. the crowd. One-handed grab. Two to Vic Hunter. Got a little, little wild <laughs> thing in there. <laughs> All of them flinched. Hit the bowl. Hey, <laughs> Bert, effectively wild at times. Hit the Rolling Stone sign there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. Chase the rise to end the inning but damage done. Children's Hospital Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. A2 Texas over Stanford with Mike White on the headset. And coach, uh, your freshman Tegan Cavana has just been outstanding in the circle. What makes her such a special pitcher? You know, uh, just the ability to spin it through the zone and have a couple of different breaks on it. But, uh, you know, she has, she has a good poise, too. You know, she doesn't get rattled. She, everyone could have got rattled in that situation, but she uh, she came back strong. And so far, she's got, what, like seven or eight strikeouts? So. Eight. Oh. And I know you are grinning about your yeah. offense right now. And it's been rolling, but you've got the, the veteran, it almost feels like, in Reese Atwood. And then you've got your two Froshies yeah. tonight, Katie Stewart and Caden Her Henry. Talk about the big home run hitters in this one. Well, yeah, that's what you want a bit. Uh, I think Katie Stewart maybe looked pretty good by not putting the sack bunt down. So, <laughs> so yeah, I have to recheck that one. But, uh, you know, Caden Henry's been hitting the ball really well. And, and it's fun just to you have somebody else come in behind the, the class from last year. And we, that's what we want to build ourselves on. We already beat you to the punch on that bunt call, Mike. Don't you worry <laughs> <Yeah>. about it. <laughs> Don't worry. Singleton told me about it, too. So, you know. Thank yeah. you so Thank much, you, Coach. Right. Welcome. <laughs> Love it. Oh. How about the home runs? Well, it's pretty fun, too. If you watch Reese Atwood, who's, who's going to have a lot of home runs in her career? The reacts are like, I've been here. I've done this before. She crushes in the night. But how about the Frosty? Kaden Henry, her first of her career, and just the difference in reaction. The emotion, that's got to feel so good. You never forget your first, so we've seen a few tonight. Um, Atwood just doesn't stop chewing her gum the whole time. Just like, just no big thing. No, no this big is what deal. I do. It was Dentine, <laughs> coach. So last year, Texas had two, two games. So twice in 61 games that they had three home runs in a game. Twice. Already this year, it's happened three times in seven games. So much power. It's not your mama's longhorns anymore. Here's Ali Kaneshiro, 3-4-5, to face Kavan. And Coach White, uh, I think, was right on his count there. Eight strikeouts through the first three innings, striking out eight of the nine out. He acts like he doesn't know, but we know he knows. He knows. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he is locked in on his pitching staff. Kind of sure of taking three and one. Alley struck out in the first. Been hard to lay off the Kavan rise ball that runs up and out of the zone. Fly ball to center. Dayton will take it. One down. Big college basketball Saturday we have for you on ESPN. And it all tips off at noon Eastern. Triple header for you. Duke FSU, Kansas OU, and Kentucky Auburn. The Sonic Blockbuster. Should be another great afternoon of college hoops. March ain't that far away, folks. Mm -hmm. We inch closer towards Championship Week and the NCAA Tournament. Of course, ESPN, your exclusive home. On the road to the women's Final Four in March Madness, headed for Cleveland this year. Here's Ava Gall, struck out looking in the second. Mount's had a good mix of pitches up in the zone. She's used her changeup. There it is again. One thing that Mike White does with his pitchers is he develops them. He uses the tools that they have and then obviously looks at what can help set those rise balls apart. Maybe look down, look off. There's a punch out for Kavan. Two down. And the fact 
he teaches his pitchers not to be afraid to spin the ball through the zone. So a lot of velocity. That's why they induce a lot of swing and miss because they're not afraid to put the ball up. So this is over the heart of the plate, but it's elevated. It's up at the highs, at the eyes. And so when you put the ball over the white part of the plate, you just have to make sure it's moving well and that it's either low below the knees or up above the hands. And then you induce those swing and misses. It's only been two balls put in play for outs. I mean, it's incredible the amount of swing and miss. Emily Jones singled in the second and then scored on the Barry home run. The only miscues for Kavan got Jessica Allister, Stanford's head coach coming up. Cardinal at five and three. They're finding their way early on. Some good tests here against top 20 opponents. Fly ball out to Bella Dayton again in center. The one, two, three inning for Kavan. Eight, two, Horns. Welcome back to the 2024 Shriners Children's Hospital Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield, 8-2 Texas, leading Stanford. They're the head coach now for the Cardinal, Jessica Allister. Well, coach, you've been really excited about this freshman class, Jade Berry, getting you guys on the board. What adjustments do you guys need to continue to make against Kavan? Yeah, I think we're starting to like see the ball a little bit better. We're starting to get on time. We need to continue to try to get something down and then um, fight to not be sped up. Um, for the change up. It's easier said than done, but I think our bats are getting a little bit better and we just gotta stick with it. And Coach, Alyssa Houston, your freshman, you have opportunity for her to get some work in the circle. What do you like about this great freshman? Well, I like how she just, you know, went straight out the hitter and that's what we're gonna need for her here too. I think when you look at the game, um, we're playing in a ballpark right now where the ball's flying. Um, so you gotta eliminate the freebies and compete in the zone. So just keep going right at them. Thank you very Thanks, much, Coach. Al. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Here's a look at some of the numbers tonight for Stanford. Uh, Houston is their third different pitcher. They have combined for five strikeouts. One of those was hers in the one batter she faced. Vic Hunter to end the bottom of the third. So now she'll face the top of the Texas order here to start out the bottom of the fourth. Well, it's interesting, both Houston and Caban. Iowa premier fast pitch, you know, both great pitchers from that state. playing in that program. Which in today's travel ball, you can be from the East Coast and play on the West Coast. <laughs> and I see it all over. But it's great to see the way that these uh, young athletes play with and against each other throughout their travel ball careers. Well, one of the things that all the coaches were consistent with talking to us and all our Zooms coming into this was we want to see how our freshmen do. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it being February. You know, we're used to calling games into May and June, but right now it's let's test these young players. Well, that's really, you know, what it's all about. You know, we see with UCLA, right, they graduated 90% of their innings last year, so they have very good pitching, but Taylor Tinsley only about 10% of the innings she was able to throw last year. So it's tough when all of a sudden your ace does not have a lot of experience. So able to check on it, yep. Houston wanted that too. <laughs> <laughs> so did the fans, but I love her reaction. She was just leaning like, give it to me. It's as close as you're gonna see it. This is upstairs. Three and 
Three, two pitch. And she's able to draw the walk to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Here's our ABC Saturday NHL matinee doubleheader for you. The Bruins hosting the Kings at 12.30 Eastern. Then it's the Oilers and the Stars. Pre-game coverage begins at noon Eastern, and both games are also available on ESPN+. Plus. Mia Scott, a single and a ground out, one run scored. Keep in mind here as well, if Texas wants to step on the gas and try and end this early, they are two runs away from putting Stanford into run rule territory, which would give them just one more at bat in the fifth inning, if they can get ahead by eight runs. the work of Bella Dayton, by the way, the, the leadoff, three two counts, all three times she came up, has walked twice and struck out once, and now finds herself again over there at first base. And a lot of times you want that leadoff to take a lot of pitches, really work those pitchers. She's always been a spark plug for this Texas team. Back-to-back -back walks. So that very important 10th run of the night for Texas is now on base. Now batting the catcher, Katie Stewart. And here comes the home run hitter from the first inning, Katie Stewart, a three run shot that scored Dayton and Mia Scott. Just a reminder on the power surge early. Last season, only twice did they have a three home run game. They've already done that. Now tonight is the third time in seven games. And they have so much plate discipline. Rarely see them fishing outside the zone. Two and two. Atwood, who has also hit a home run tonight, is on deck. Lurking with a chance to step up with the bases loaded. We've seen all rise balls in this at bat, too, just different locations in the zone. Needs to go to another pitch. She's got a drop ball. Even a screwball coming in on the hands of Stewart. And Mike White, true to his word, did not give her the bunt sign this at bat. <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> Fly ball out to left. Chan under it. Runners will have to hold. One down with Atwood coming up. Just a good battle by Houston in the circle. The designated player, Reese Atwood. Stewart getting uh, some information to Reese since this is a new pitcher to those two. Still the same piece of gum we're thinking. She hit the home I'm run. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Yeah. 
And just to remind you, back in that third inning, same piece of comb, same beautiful swing. She went down to get an off-speed pitch. One of the best swings in the game. So much power, even got fooled for a second, but didn't phase her. Well, you guys know you don't mess with a streak, right? So that, that may just be the same piece of gum from last weekend and just oh, geez. <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> store it. You store it on your bedside table. Oh, gosh. Start it up Please again the next day. Please don't tell me you have familiarity with this. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to microwave it to soften it up. <laughs> oh, she wanted another home run ball there. That's when you're feeling good. You hit a home run that was below your knees, and then you still like the cheese up at your eyeballs. <laughs> She almost foul tipped that too. One, two. Got her. Second strikeout for her, uh, Houston. Oh, it looks like Houston going upstairs with that rise ball for the setup and then goes right back to that corner. In fact, even a little bit lower induces the swing and miss. I love the way the freshman is going right at one of the best home run hitters in the game. Not a Vivi Martinez. Ground out in the first, got hit by a pitch in the third. Gonna stay in play, yes it will. And Gall's got it at first, so a couple stranded. To the fifth, we head to the fifth. Six, seven, eight, due up in the order. Here's Kylie Chung. With the home run hitter, Jade Berry on deck. Simpson, four and one last year with a 2.60 ERA and uh, spent a lot of time coming out of the bullpen. That was after she burst onto the scene in the 2022 Supers with a brilliant World Series clinching win over Arkansas in the Supers on the road in hostile territory that got them a ticket to Oklahoma City. She's very good at pitching backwards. She will throw more change-ups than hard stuff. There's a look at it. So be big adjustments. Stanford going from all the hard to now a lot of soft. Two-two. Right down the pipe. First strikeout for Simpson. Tegan Pavan, the freshman, was just outstanding. Really having a great night. Using all of her pitches, the rise ball is explosive. She has that double plate break. And oh yes, she can also throw a really good change up. She'll go down in the zone as well. She'll spread it out with almost a scries, a rise ball that moves away. Bright future for that freshman. Two hits, the two runs on the home run. Nine strikeouts without a walk and only 66 pitches. And a well-deserved smoothie as her reward. I want a smoothie. It does look good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't strike out nine batters today, though, so. <laughs> Remember a couple of years ago here, Smitty, talking to Leah Jordan about what kind of peanut butter she likes? That's right. Crunchy or... Giving us a little yeah. information. Wonder what kind of smooth smoothie is Kavan. Strikeout for Simpson. Two in a row. This off-speed Smitty is just dirty. And when you can throw this pitch pretty much middle, middle, but look at the spin and the way that she sells it at release. That's why you see the bats quick enough. She doesn't slow down her arm at all. Back-to-back -back strikeouts on the same pitch. Yeah, she, that's the pitch. She throws that more than any of her other pitches. You don't always see that. You know? No. Like you said, she works backwards. Yeah. Give you some off speed and when you least expect it. Here's, here's my regular pitches. 
11 combined strikeouts for the Texas pitchers. They have struck out seven of the nine in the batting order. Only Emily Jones and River Mailer have escaped their wrath. Looks like peanut butter mood. Off the end of the bat, that's gonna be trouble. Gotta hurry it short, and the throw over to first from Vivia's in time. Three up and three down for Simpson to the bottom of the fifth. And two now, there's a game at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Make sure you check the Clearwater Invitational website for all the latest info. And if your team is playing later in the day tomorrow, like Texas is, for example, those games will stay as scheduled for the time being. And uh, hopefully uh, the weatherman is wrong and we won't get a lot of rain and we can play all those games out for you. It can rain everywhere else, just not in this block. Not on That's the right. complex. It's all building towards Sunday night with a scheduled ESPN doubleheader starting at 6 o'clock, UCF, UCLA, and Florida State, Tennessee. Let's go. All on the road to the Women's College World Series. with this freshman, mm. Alyssa Houston. I mean, we've not seen a whole lot of her. And Beth, you talked about it. Nigeri Kennedy is for sure the ace of the staff. They are looking for the pitchers that are going to pitch behind her, get innings, and get out. I like, obviously, her rise ball is her go-to, but she has a good drop ball and the screwball off of that. Not afraid to go in the righties. I love pitchers that aren't afraid to go inside. It's just hard to dig in, to, right? There's some pitchers when there's so much around the zone, you can just kind of dig in. You know you can just attack the strike zone. Can't really with Houston. I mean, she's she's around it. She's over it. She's maybe right through the middle of it. <laughs> she might hit the backstop. <laughs> hey, it's part of it. Effectively wild. Yeah! Boom, just like that. Going upstairs again for her third strikeout, two down. She's just got a live ball, and sometimes a live ball is just hard to pick up. She's got that unique form at the end where she really pulls up, and this pitch up at the eyeballs, and Good is just going to swing through it. Mom and Dad back in Benton, Arkansas are proud right now. <laughs> Watching from home. Brother's senior day. Couldn't miss. There's a deep fly ball. Back that one goes, and off the scoreboard. It's Caden. Second home run in her last two at bats. Henry with their second long ball of the night, second in as many at bats and the freshman just going yard. Look at the way she just turns on that. Very quiet with her lower body, no step, but just great rotation, great extension with those hands and that ball. You can hear it off the bat, you can hear it off the scoreboard. A three-run home run in the third, solo here in the fifth. All nine home runs scored tonight, home runs. And now they are one out or one run away from a run rule win. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Vic Hunter, second at bat for her. The freshman Caden Henry, four RBIs, the two home runs. Back it goes to the wall, and it will stay in the yard. Jones. Tennessee to close out this fifth annual 
Clearwater Invitational. The Women's College World Series for Florida State and Tennessee. FSU beat Tennessee to advance to the finals. McKenna Reed and Kat Sandercock leading the way. Three home runs in that showdown for Florida State before falling in the final to OU. Just when you think she's gonna throw a change out. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. River Mailer and then the top of the order. River is one of only two Cardinal that have not struck out tonight. Popped up in the third. Simpson struck out two of the three she faced in the fifth. That was after Tegan Kavan struck out nine through four innings. All 11 runs thanks to balls that have left the yard. Oh, look at the movement on that. And now eight of the nine in the order have been struck out, one down. How do you describe that? Me buckling, bugs bunny -ish. I mean, the changeup, it just disappears. And so it looks like she's going to be throwing that ball at you at the mid 60s, and it just floats in. Sophia Simpson, one of the best changeups in the game. I love the way she uses it early, often. It's outstanding. And unpredictable. Yeah. Yes. Because if you can look change, it, it definitely is an easier pitch to hit because you sp spot right yeah. out of the hand that spin. Just when you think it's coming, she's been very unpredictable. Bugs Bunny was a uh, cartoon character who <laughs> spent a lot of time <laughs> fooling people and making them look silly. Is that, that needs from back, from back in the day. It's okay. called Looney Tunes. It was a Looney Tune. <laughs> Did I Actually, it might have been in Space Jam. Huh? Space, yeah, Space Jam. New, new Space, Space Jam, too. Yeah, so, okay, so the That's kids new. know who Bugs Bunny is. He was with LeBron. Fabulous. <laughs> I was worried there for a while. With Michael prior to that. Yeah, but no one knows that one either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. The rise balls and the change up for the dozen strikeouts tonight. And a walk here to Kern. Don't forget Sunday on ABC, undefeated South Carolina. Can anybody give them a run? George is going to try. And college game day will be there, live from Columbia. Coverage will begin at noon Eastern. Holly's head is on a popsicle stick. They are yeah. popsicle sticks. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be talking a lot about Caitlin Clark. Made history this Good week, 3,569 points in 126 career games. Almost equally other. impressive yeah. is the fact that she also has over 1,000 assists. How cool was that to watch yeah. last night? Oh, We're all fabulous. gathered around. Yeah, it's awesome. And she hit that three, like eight feet behind the three-point line. Only she can do. Logo threes. It's like Kylie Buckley is on to pinch run at first. Kaylin Koch struck out a couple of times tonight. This is the first base runner for Stanford since back in the second inning. Card the uh, Texas pitchers had retired 10 in a row prior to that. And now Buckley into scoring position. One of the fun things about here in Clearwater is we've got multiple games going on at the same time. 
here at the Eddie Seymour Complex. What else we got? A strikeout for Simpson, two down. It's currently on ESPN Plus there on your right. Another high scoring affair. UCF beating Wisconsin right now, 14 to nine in the top of the sixth. Close play at first. Looks like another run in for UCF, 15 to nine now. Meanwhile, it's Ali Kaneshiro batting for Stanford on the left. Um, nowhere to go for Simpson. Runners on the corners now for the card with two outs. The first baseman, 40 games in four days as we are getting set to close things down for the evening, day two. And depending on the weather, wall-to-wall -wall softball for you starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Check the Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield website to stay informed about whether or not we'll be able to play all day long tomorrow. And when your team might be on, come back over to Simpson. No damage done. 9-2. Horns. Top of the order, but it's a pinch hitter here for Texas. Katie Simmons. Junior out of Humble, Texas. Facing the freshman in the circle, Alyssa Houston. Has struck out three since she's come on. Walked a couple and the solo home run to Henry. Yeah, the only hit is the home run. A couple of free passes in that first full inning of work for Houston, but she settled in. Retired the next three in order. I think a game like this is a perfect opportunity to put her in there and let her figure it out, especially against a very good hitting Texas team. Reduces the pop up. Going down. Mia Scott will give way to Jordan Whitaker. Pinch hitting for Texas, number five, Jordan Whitaker. Right-handed senior. Whitaker, and there's a base hit, gets through the left side. Mailer tried to barehand, really the only place she could attempt. Base hit for Jordan. Bit of a knuckleball off the bat. Oh, looks like it went off the end of the bat. Had some nutsy spin to it. Wallace will come on to run. And that is the game winning run now at first base with one out. And running for Texas at first base, number four, Isaiah Wallace. Whitaker's reaction, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I did hit it. <laughs> oh, it like, just it came happen? off the now bat so far. Well, like it, I'm sure it felt like a foul ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations, Jordan. Her first hit of the season. Crazy fast hands. That's the way Mike White describes Katie Stewart, freshman.
0-2. Got her out last time by jamming her. You can tell they're trying to come back inside. Stays away from her, one and two. Watching all the little quirky differences in the build up to an at bat. Look at the, look, watch the right hand. <laughs> Fingers. She's playing a flute, piano, something. Good eye runs the count full. Whatever it is, after she's hitting the ball the way she is right now, she's going to do the same thing every time. Get those fingers moving, rub them together. Oh, she's Oh, it. wow. Oh. And takes a look at strike three. That's number four for Houston. Rise ball, upper part of the zone. I think Stort thinks it's up. Houston getting the call, fourth strikeout for the freshman. Can Houston get through Atwood now? is made by Emily Jones. Last chance coming up as we head to the seventh for the card. They're down nine to two. Mac Morgan is on to try and close it out. Three outs away from the dub. It's her first appearance since an opening day no hitter last weekend. Mac Morgan with a lot of experience, great drop ball. In fact, 83% of her strikeouts were on the drop ball last year. Super heavy at the lower half of the zone. Emily Jones. And then uh, they got a pinch hitter, Jonna Schroeder, in the on deck circle. Jones is the only remaining player in the lineup that has not struck out tonight. And she'll keep it that way. Nice snag, though, at second. Washington robs a base hit, one down. How about Lisa Washington? I love the way she moves to that ball. Look at where she's at, and she sees immediately. She has that hop like we see tennis players a lot of times, so she can break in either direction. She is so deep into right field going. Like, look at that stretch. Snow cones it. And the turn. When she turns, she settles her eyes. She locks in on first. Two down. Hey, this weekend, MetLife Stadium will host the NHL's next two outdoor games on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. The Stadium Series, tomorrow the Flyers square off against the Devils. And Sunday, it's the Rangers and Islanders. Jay Berry, the final chance, the two-run home run in the second, struck out in the fifth. Texas an out away from 7 and 0 this year. Yeah, 
two and one. for the second time tonight. Kyra Chan is due up. Looks like they'll get a pinch runner on. Allison Morikawa. a winner 9 to 2 over Stanford they hit four